Curve sketching. So we've learned how to sketch quadratics earlier in this unit. Now we will look at sketching more complicated polynomials, however the basics are the same. We need to know where does the curve cut the y-axis, where does the curve cut the x-axis, where are the stationary points and what are their nature. So let's try an example together. Example 1. Sketch the curve f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared. Now before we start, we should have an idea of what that looks like in our head. It's a positive cubic. Okay, so we're kind of looking for two turning points. We're looking for a maximum and a minimum turning point, but where are they? So let's start by looking at our stationary points in order to sketch the curve. So our derivative is 6x squared minus 6x. And for stationary points, we need to let f dash the x equal 0. Once we've equated it to 0, we then need to factorise and solve. So factorising, we'll take a common factor out of 6x, and that will leave us with a bracket of x minus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, we have stationary points when x is 0 and x is 1. But what about the nature? Well, we'll do our second derivative. So our second derivative is 12x minus 6. And when x is 0, our second derivative is equal to negative 6. Therefore, this must be a maximum turning point. And when x is 1, our second derivative is positive 6, which means this must be a minimum turning point, which was as expected. Next, we'll need to get our y-coordinates. So having them going back to our original function, f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared. We'll first of all insert when x is 0. So when x is 0, we get a y-coordinate coming out as 0 also. And when x is 1, we'll have 2 multiplied by 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared, which gives us a y-coordinate of negative 1. Therefore, we have a maximum turning point at 0, 0 and a minimum turning point at 1, minus 1. Now that we have discovered where our stationary points are, the next thing we need to consider are our x and y intercepts. So let's start with the y intercept. This will occur when x is 0. If we put 0 into the function, we know the answer is 0 that comes out. There is no number at the end of that function. Then we're looking at our x axis intercepts or our roots. To do this, we need to equate the function to 0. We essentially factorise and solve it. So 2x cubed minus 3x squared equal to 0. We'll take out a common factor of x squared and that'll leave in our bracket 2x minus 3 equals 0. So we have a root when x is 0 or we have a root when x is 3 over 2. So that'll give us two other points to plot 0, 0 and 3 over 2, 0. And here we have the graph of f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared. You can clearly see we have our roots at 0, 0 and 3 over 2, 0 um, and our y-intercept at 0, 0 also and then we have a maximum turning point at 0, 0 and our minimum turning point at 1, minus 1. It is really important that you label all points on your graph to gain full marks in the exam. Example 2. Sketch the curve f of x equals 3x cubed minus 9x plus 6. To start we're going to look at our stationary points. So our derivative is 9x squared minus 9. And for stationary points, we have to remember we let f dash x equal 0. So equating 9x squared minus 9 equal to 0, we then have to factorise to solve it. We can first take out a common factor of 9, leaving x squared minus 1. And x squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares. So this will factorise to give 9 bracket x minus 1 
bracket x plus 1. Therefore, our stationary points occur when x is 1 and when x is minus 1. But what about the nature? For the nature, we have to evaluate our second derivative. So our second derivative is equal to 18x. And when x is 1, our second derivative will be 18. Therefore, this must be a minimum turning point. And when x is minus 1, our second derivative is negative 18, therefore this is a maximum turning point. Now that we've got the nature and our x-coordinates, we now have to establish our y-coordinates of our stationary points. So we're going to go back to our original function, f of x equals 3x cubed minus 9x plus 6. And when x is 1, our y-coordinate will be 0. And when x is minus 1, our y-coordinate will be 12. Just be careful of your negative 1 um, when you are evaluating your y-coordinate. So we have a minimum turning point at 1, 0. And we have a maximum turning point at negative 1, 12. So now that we've established our stationary points, the next step is to look at our x and y intercepts. So starting first of all with the y intercept, we can clearly see the function has a number 6 at the end of it. Therefore, if x is 0, y is 6. So our y intercept is 0, 6. For our x intercepts, we have to factorise and solve for essentially finding our roots. Now, in order to factorise this cubic function, we have to use synthetic division. So setting up our synthetic division, we're going to put our coefficients along the top. 3, 0 as there's no x squared term, negative 9 and 6. Now, we have to guess factors of 6. I am going to guess initially a root of minus 2 and we're going to bring the 3 down to the front. So we're multiplying negative 2 with 3 and we get negative 6. We then add vertically on our synthetic division, so 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6. We then multiply this negative 6 with negative 2 to get positive 12. We then add negative 9 and 12 to get 3 and then multiply the 3 with the negative 2 which will give us an answer of negative 6 and 6 plus negative 6 is 0. As the remainder is 0, x equal to negative 2 must be a root. So what we'll have to do now is we have to factorise our quotient. Now, when x equals minus 2, the factor that went with that was x plus 2, our bracket. And our quotient is 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. And if we factorise this back bracket, we can take first a common factor out of 3 to make it slightly easier. And if we take a common factor out of 3, we're left with x squared minus 2x plus 1 which factorises to x minus 1, x minus 1. Here you can see we have a repeated root. This should have been expected because we have a turning point when x is equal to 1. And if we have a turning point that lies on the axis, we have a turning point at 1, 0, um, that means it is a repeated root. So the two roots that we're going to plot are when x equals negative 2 and when x equals 1. Here we can see the graph of 3x cubed minus 9x plus 6. So we have our y-intercept clearly showing at 0, 6. Our roots at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. A maximum turning point at negative 1, 12 and our minimum turning point at 1, 0. Again, please make sure all points are clearly labelled on your graph for you to gain maximum marks. Now try this example on your own. 
there are some key success criteria um, listed to help you along your way. Please pause the video. And here is the solution. So the graph of 8x cubed plus 6x to the power of 4 should have a y-intercept at 0. It has two roots when x is 0 and when x is negative 4 over 3. A minimum turning point at negative 1, negative 2. And a rising point of inflection at 0, 0. Please see your class teacher if you have any questions on this example. So self-assess your progress. How did you get on today? Red, amber or green? If you want to try some extra work, then you can find that on page 107, exercise 6N. So what have we learned today? Well, we've learned how to sketch curves. Key steps were find the y-intercept, factorise and solve to find the roots, differentiate to find the turning points, and use the second derivative to find the nature of these turning points. And remember, you must annotate the graph fully and join the dots. Thank you.